Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are starting uh, our function, which is in honor of our colleague, our friend, the late Professor uh, Nobo Banada. Uh, I know there are people who are online, so I will go through protocol. Uh, the Chancellor, Makere University, the Chair, Council, Makere University, uh, the Vice Chancellor, uh, I'm seeing the Vice Chair, Mwasa, uh, all dignitaries, uh, members, all colleagues from the church, and uh, all colleagues from Makere University. Uh, we are going to have uh, our function in two parts. Uh, one will be speeches, and the other one will be prayers uh, led by the Seventh Adventist Church in Uganda. Uh, they are here. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Mekasing, who is the elder for the Seventh Day Adventist Students Association of Makere University. Uh, please stand up. And uh, we also have uh, Pastor Dr. Maka Moses, the Executive uh, Secretary, Union of the Seventh Adventist Church in Uganda. Dr. Please. Uh, so they will lead the prayers. Uh, for the program of speeches, we shall have uh, brief remarks from the Dean of School of Food Technology and Nutrition and Bioengineering, uh, where Professor Bernard has been a member of staff. Then we shall have remarks uh, from, from Professor William Bazeo on behalf of all the colleagues or friends of the late Professor Nobo Banada. And uh, then we have remarks from the principal, College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, uh, where Professor Nobo Banada has been a member of staff. Then we have a detailed tribute by the Vice Chancellor, Professor Banabas Nawangwe. Then we have uh, remarks from Chair Council. I'm told uh, the remarks from Chair Council will be read by the uh, Vice Chancellor. Then we shall have remarks from the Chancellor, Makere University. We are honored to have him online. Then we shall switch to uh, the second part, which will be uh, led by church. Uh, we shall request uh, all speakers to be brief because uh, of the situation, we want to be here for a short time. So if you allow me, uh, we are going to go into uh, the first item. That's remarks from the Dean, School of Food Technology and Nutrition and Bioengineering, where the late Professor Banada has been a head of department uh, of agriculture and biosystems engineering and uh, a member of the academic staff. And uh, given the fact that we are scattered around, uh, most members are not here, uh, some are online, uh, but uh, they've been up and down, so I'll give the remarks. I'm the Dean, uh, School of Food Technology and Nutrition and Bioengineering, and uh, I'm uh, going to talk on behalf of the school and the department. Abel uh, Atkwase are my names. Uh, it's a, a very difficult moment uh, for all of us who have interacted with uh, Professor Nobo Banada. Uh, he's been a, a very hardworking, focused, and uh, someone who loved Makerere 
so much. So as a school and a department, uh, we are very much saddened by his untimely death uh, because he's been one of the youngest professors uh, within the school and also within the university. So when you lose such a life uh, untimely, I think he had so many uh, good things to contribute uh, to the university in particular and the country at large. So it's a very big loss to us, uh, but uh, uh, normally, as they say, when things happen, you have to organize yourself and see how to move on. So we are going to miss him greatly as a colleague, as someone who has mentored so many people in the field of agricultural and biosystems engineering. And uh, we wish him uh, a very uh, restful uh, period and may his soul rest in eternal peace. Uh, I thank you. So without uh, uh, wasting time, I take the honor to invite uh, Professor William Bazeo uh, to give remarks on behalf of all the colleagues uh, of the late Professor Nobo Banada. Professor, you come here. Uh, we've been told that we, we avoid uh, exchanging the mic, so it's, uh, I'm going to leave the, the button on and then you kick in, but we can sanitize maybe the air around to make sure that it's, uh, it's safe. Thank you, Prof. The Chancellor of the University, Professor Suruma, the Chair of Council, and all Council members, the Vice Chancellor, Makeri University, Professor Banabas Nawangwe, the, De the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Finance and Administration, Deputy Vice Chancellor, AA. University Secretary, members of the top management, principals, deans, professors, colleagues in the university, both academic and administration, ladies and gentlemen. It is a very sad moment for me speak about Banada and uh, I was hesitant to accept because he's been so close to me that his passing on really broke me as to whether we are losing the, the war against COVID or whether something else is happening. But as a believer, I try to stand firm and say that since we believe that what is written in the Bible has to come true, therefore we give the opportunity for Banada to live but we remember and cherish what he has left behind and we work to make this uni university and country better than we found it. Bernard was a young man as the dean as he has been described. He has only been a staff of McKinley 
for approximately 10 years. But his impact on the university is maybe greater than many, many people that have been here for more than 30 years. To those that have interacted with Banada, we know what he meant, and we know if you called upon him, what he would deliver for Makerere University. The greatest loss is Makerere University. I have been on this campus teaching for quite a while. We have lost people, but this time we have lost somebody that was there that would build the university when we are no longer here. He has very many friends, and you must admit that he had too many friends in Makerere. Choosing me as one of his friends, I think was just to say who is around, who can say something. But I'm, I'm sure there are friends of his that he has worked with every day. And I will say, I have seen Banada come with his friends only to sit and talk about work in the university, have dinner at Piatto restaurant, just have dinner and talk. And you ask him, he says, we are catching up with work at the university. I remember, and I will give only four examples of his work. There was a call for the Oliver Tambo chair, which many academicians may know, and it was widely competed for the whole of Africa and beyond. He came to see me and thought that I know. And he said, William, I want to apply for this. Do you support? He found me in my private time, in the evening, this is a man who was not drinking alcohol. I don't drink alcohol. So we sat, he explained to me, and I read through the call. And my answer was, let's go for it. He gave me one condition and said, as I apply, I want you to be my mentor. Because it's, this is something that normally is taken by very senior people that will need guidance in leadership and so on. And he said, because it involves one, money, it involves management, it involves leadership, I will bank on you. He wrote the document, he brought it to me, I went through it and gave, gave my comments. And we refined it and submitted it. First round, he won. He came back excited and we there were other conditions for the second round. We did. And he won it. And he said to me, this is not me, it is you who has won it. I said, no, everything was written by you. He said, but if you hadn't encouraged me and supported me to review it, I wouldn't have won it. This, under this grant, which I'm sure the monies hadn't come because of COVID, I hope the funders will continue to have this grant to Makere University. It was, was going to work with South Africa's Stellenbosch University and the, another university which name is very difficult, Wagenege or something like that in Netherlands, to expose students to different study and research environments. So Ugandan students junior staff who are going to be given resources to actually be exposed in the three universities for research. I hope Vice Chancellor will follow this up and we can still have this grant. I don't know, I didn't read the conditions. The second one, all of you know that we have a cattle corridor in Uganda and farmers have suffered and him being in agriculture engineering said, how can we help farmers 
In the Cato Corridor, demystify drought. They stop having cows die and other animals when there is a dry season. He came to me and said, you have, you do some work in Nakasongora. What do you do? I told him, he said, this doesn't work. It, it cannot be sustainable. And there was an opportunity. I coordinate another project, which the Vice Chancellor may talk about in relation to him, in, with Chukrova University in Turkey. So I sent a message to them and I said, since you do agriculture and irrigation, can we come and benchmark? He led a team, I went with a team, he led a team, there was Isa, there was uh, Nicholas and others. We went with our pens and notebooks to learn. When we reached, after the vice chancellor, the president there, who they called the rector, talked, they gave us a team. The team told us before we went around what they expect of us, a full proposal for funding. So I asked him, do you have a proposal? He said, but we didn't talk about it before we came. But we have the information about Makerere and what we need in our heads. So we went toward the farms. When we came back, we sat and had a meeting and we said, between now and 3 a.m. or 4 a.m., we produce a proposal. I want, Vice Chancellor, I want to tell you, we have bright people in Makerere. Nicholas and uh, Issa and, uh, and uh, Nobo, each one got his computer. And we started brainstorming what to put. At the end, in the morning we had, as we went to sleep at four, we had a proposal which was about 17, 20 pages. So we said we wake up early before breakfast, we polish it up, we go and present it. And Nobo, you represent it. He said, but you are leading the university team. I said, no, you are in agriculture. We presented it, and as I speak, our colleagues in Turkey are so worried that this project now is going to die. I sent the message, we sent condolences, and I'm sure the vice chancellor is going there next week. He will receive condolences on the other side. But what did we agree? That we establish a demonstration farm for Makerere in the Kato Corridor, and we demonstrate that you can actually have pasture despite the drought. We came back, we thank our vice chancellor who worked, gave us letters and introduction letters. We recently received five square miles of land in the names of Makere University in Nakasongora to actually do this project. And we were now zeroed in to start because the Minister of Finance has allocated resources to start that project. But since he has been working with Issa, Nicholas, and the other team that I, I don't remember very well, we will continue, I will continue to support them if they come, but I know that where they are, They'll continue. The second one, the second one, the third one, you know that procurement is a very difficult and unpleasant position for anybody. If they say that one is a procurement officer, if you all remember, our president talked about procurement and how it was hindering progress in moving against COVID. Nobo, having accepted to be on this committee and chair it two terms, is something that we must thank him for. Because I have not seen in the papers, I know that Makerere people like writing in papers, both right and wrong, uh, trash and everything, but I have not seen anything written in the papers that the procurement committee of Makerere did this to their benefit.
and this is credit to him as a chair. As a friend, I know that he has gone and left a clean report in procurement. He was a senator. And while he was a senator, the senators elected him to become a council member. It is very nice to be a council member of Makere University. But because he valued what happens at procurement for Makere, he stepped down to that position, which is lower than being a, can a council member, and did the work. And I want uh, the, the, the chancellor and the vice chancellor to know that all the COVID work we have done, all the projects that we have done under this difficult condition, we have not had problems in procurement. And he has been there support. Lastly, many of you know that it is not very easy to win anything from the Pope. If, if, if you are, I'll not say this other thing. But we know that he made Makerere University proud by becoming the first African recipient of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences. And I'm sure the, oh, 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 the, the Vice Chancellor will enumerate for us what that means and what it meant for Makerere. But on a personal note, Banada was a strong man, had a strong will to grow, to develop. This is somebody who would come walk from his office to my office and say, I have not come for anything, but I have come to ask you what you think. I'm going to tell you, and you tell me what you think. And then he would go back. Banada one time told me that it's not enough to keep shouting that we need a pay of a professor. As they said, he was a professor, he became a professor at 37, I think the youngest professor, I don't know, in, in Makerere at that time. It's not enough to get a salary and we will look after our children and children will have quality education. And he gave me an example. The example he gave me, I knew, but he gave me so that now I understood that actually we are the same level. He said, people who are not professors do farming, do business, and they make money. Is it wrong for me as a professor to do farming and do business and make money and make sure that my family lives well? I said, no. I said, I'm also a farmer. Because he was talking to me after that one he asked me after he learned that actually I was retiring. And then he said, I have been watching your business. I have, I, I'm not going to tell you. So he established a small farm. And he said, I'll come with my wife, Beatrice, to come and we learn from you. I said, you won't learn anything. You, you have covered your own, you have studied these things, me, I haven't studied them. But they visited me twice. The first time they came together, we spent the whole day going through what we do. And he said, this one I will do, this one I will not do. This one I don't have the land for it. And I'm not going to tell you what he got from my farm. And I'm sure, and I was talking to Professor Saras are here, that I pray that the wife continues these projects that she had started. As for the faculty where he came from, the college, I think there is a big hole. But you can fill that hole. You try and fill that hole because he was not selfish on what he knew. He was not selfish. We have people in this country, we have people in this university who are selfish. What they know, they want to do it and be successful. I have read many books about success. You cannot succeed 
alone, you must succeed with others. And that's why he shared most of his projects with his colleagues in the college. And they know what he was doing. On behalf of friends, I want to appeal to Ugandans. We have not yet lost the war. When he was admitted, he sent me a message and I thought somebody had hacked his phone. He said, I'm here, admitted. Then I decided to call. He said, yeah, that's true. I said, so can I come and I take you to Mlago? He said, no, no, these people will take me, take care of me. But what am I saying? We should stop blame games that the private sector is doing this, is doing that. Yes, the charges are high, but we must also do something. And I, on this note, some of you who don't know, our vice chancellor who is here is doing so much to prepare for Makerere. He has, with his management, approved and the council to establish an ICU unit at the hospital which we are working on to build and an oxygen plant. We are working on this. At least in the next three months or less, Makere University will have another alternative place for Ugandans as ICU and oxygen production. But on a personal level, and I want to say this, I have no fear that we have so many professors and lecturers, people with PhDs in Makerere, who have shunned the vaccine. When we got the vaccine to this hospital, I sit on the chair for the vaccine, National Vaccine Advisory Committee with Professor Serwada as the chair, Professor Rhoda Wanyenze is a member, Professor Sewan, Sewan Kambo is a member, we are all from Makerere. We said Makerere should also be one of the centers. We have a big population to vaccinate. What happened? Makerere people shunned, and the largest number, if you go down there, was non-Makerere staff. We have Makerere staff, and I'm sure some of them are seated here, others online. You have refused the vaccine. You are doing a disservice to yourself and your families. We are the ones who tell the people we need to embrace the vaccine. The president has said enough. The minister has said enough. Academicians, where are we to educate our people? SOPs, you come here, you see a whole professor walking around on the compound without a mask. When you ask him, he says, but I'm walking alone. It's not fair. On that note, I want, on behalf of the friends, to say we have lost, we have stayed in the war, let us hang in there, let us help this country to fight this war. May Banada's soul rest in peace. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Vazeyo, uh, for those uh, wonderful remarks on behalf of the colleagues of Professor uh, Noble Banada. Uh, next, uh, we have the principal, College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, uh, Professor Bernard Bashasha, is online, uh, Prof. Uh, if you're hearing us, uh, please unmute and maybe switch on your uh, video for a short time so that we can uh, see you and uh, then give your brief remarks. Uh, after completing your remarks, I'm requesting you uh, to invite uh, the Vice Chancellor uh, to give a tribute. Uh, for uh, Professor Nobo Banada. Prof.
start the video because the host has stopped it. So the host needs to do something if you need to see me. But I just go ahead and we can sort that one out. Um, the clergy, um, the family of uh, the late Professor Nobu Banada, uh, the Chancellor Makere University, the Vice Chancellor, the Chair Council, uh, DVCs or other protocol observed. Uh, okay, um, I think now I, I can be seen. Um, it's a sad moment, as uh, previous speakers have already emphasized, and uh, we condole with the family on uh, uh, this big loss. We are all losers in this one, as uh, the previous speaker has just uh, ably put it. Uh, basically, we gather together to celebrate the life of our colleague, uh, friend, uh, parent, the late Professor Nobu Banada. It is really unbelievable that uh, well, I have to give these kinds of remarks, but uh, I have to. That's the that's the reality. Uh, we have lost a good man. We all know that, and that has been emphasized. Uh, Professor Banada, again, as has already been uh, alluded to, embodied the true definition of an academic of our time. Uh, and I speak this uh, from the deep, from the depths of my of my heart. And uh, you look at his research, uh, his academic awards, uh, his teaching, uh, there are a number of uh, uh, tributes coming in, condolence messages coming coming in from some of his friends. I was touched by one uh, who said he used to take his class to phase two and buy them lunch. And I challenged myself. I said, why? Wow, I have never done that. How did he think about that? So his teaching, relationship with students, outreach activities, innovation, internationalization, and professor, um, uh, the professor speak, previous speaker, uh, has already, Professor Bazio has mentioned that. Uh, administrative abilities, leadership, I mean, the, the footprint is everywhere, they all speak volumes about uh, what Professor Banada achieved during the time God allowed him to be on this world. He joined McKinney University uh, in 2006 as a brilliant young man. And uh, again, uh, as Professor Bazio has alluded, he quickly ran through the ranks and became a full professor at a very young age. Uh, actually, before some of us who joined several years before him. So indeed, uh, that is true, that is on record, and that is remarkable. Uh, he has left a huge legacy in terms of what he has done, in terms of training, in terms of research. His innovations are on the ground, and uh, some of them are very well captured in our recent annual report. Some of them, I'm sure, before you leave the site, you can uh, actually have a glimpse of, uh, at them. So his innovations uh, really are on the ground. And uh, he built, I would say from scratch, uh, the Department of Agriculture and Biosystems Engineering uh, that he loved and led uh, by the time uh, God took him, God called him from this world. Uh, Nobo was a friendly person. As Professor Mazi again has already said, Nobo was frank and down to earth in character. Uh, he would never hesitate to take up his responsibilities, as again has been mentioned. I would hesitate to be the chair of a contracts committee because it's just like uh, being in landmines, but this is a responsibility he took on, finished the term and even repeated. Uh, so really, uh, he, he was somebody who would uh, never shy away from a responsibility if he thought it needed to be done. Uh, I personally was his friend rather than his boss. He related to me very openly. Nobody would walk, come to office and say, look, just like uh, Professor Bazo said, we should do this, this, this way. I have done this, but I think this office is delaying this. It could have done this. So, I mean, somebody who really... Uh, worked very hard to build not only himself, not to build the students, but also to build the institution. 
uh, which he loved, but uh, unfortunately uh, has departed prematurely. Chris, indeed, as Professor Mazo has said, has lost a pillar. Makere has lost a pillar. The nation has lost a pillar. I have met with him and discussed with him, and uh, many of you know he was, uh, I think, the one heading ICAD, uh, which is a regional body. I have interacted with him at uh, international and national meetings. So he wasn't just a Makerere or a Kaius person. He was just a, uh, a national and uh, a global citizen. Uh, he had many ambitions and many plans. Some of them I knew. Of course, some of them I didn't know. And I'm sure the family knows more than, more than uh, we are saying. Uh, but God uh, made the decision, and we have to accept it. And uh, we believe he's in a better place. Uh, we pray that the Almighty God gives the family the strength and the solace to cope with their loss. Uh, we have all lost. And uh, we have many questions uh, that uh, many of us have no answers. And uh, may the Almighty God provide the answers to some of those questions that linger in the head and in the mind of everyone. And uh, we wish uh, Professor Nobo Banada so a peaceful rest. Uh, thank you very much for listening to me, Monas. Back to you in the in the conference room. So uh, I take uh, this opportunity uh, to invite uh, the Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor Banabas Nawangwe, uh, to give a detailed tribute uh, to Professor Nobo Banada. Thank you. the clergy and members of the bereaved family, the Chancellor Makere University, the chairperson and members of council, members of management, uh, deputy vice chancellors and members of management, all of you, my colleagues from Makere University and the vice chairperson, Mwasa. We are here to celebrate a great life, short but great. And I think we should praise God for that life. We have a condolence to the family, to the relatives and friends, and to the Mackay University community. And I will read that message verbatim. It is with the deepest regret and heavy hearts that Mackay University management, staff, and students extend this message of condolence on the shocking and sudden death of Professor Nobo Banada. I extend my deepest sympathies to his loved ones for the loss of such a brilliant Ugandan a biosystems engineer, researcher, and academician. We mourn a dedicated member of the academic community who has been taken from us so unexpectedly. Vanada was born in Kampala, Uganda's capital city, on May 14, 1975. 
After attending local primary and secondary schools, he was admitted to Sokoine University of Agriculture in Morogoro, Tanzania, graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Food Science and Technology. His Master of Science degree in Process Engineering, together with his Doctor of Philosophy in Chemical Engineering, were obtained from Catholic University Leuven in Leuven, Belgium. Later, he studied in a postdoctoral fellowship at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the United States. He joined the McKay University Service on 1st June 2006 in a temporary appointment as lecturer in the, de in the then Department of Food Science and Technology. Later, he was appointed lecturer on 1st July 2011 and was one of the beneficiaries of the Fast Track Promotion System and was promoted to the rank of full professor on 1st August 2012. In 2013, Professor Vanada was appointed head of Department of Agriculture and Biosystems Engineering, where he served for four years and was re-elected effective 1st September 2017 to 31st August 2021. Vanada made an indelible mark with his youthful and dynamic leadership as head of department and his sharp intellect and dedication to his students will not be forgotten. Under his leadership, the Department of Agriculture and Biosystems Engineering has been a leader in providing engineering solutions to agricultural problems in Uganda and Africa. Professor Vanada had a trailblazing scientific career. He was the first Sub-Saharan African to graduate with a PhD in chemical engineering from the Catholic University Leuven in Belgium, opening many doors for Africans. He was appointed as full professor in 2012 at the age of 37, one of the youngest persons in the history of Mackay University to reach that top rank. He was the first African recipient of the Pius XI Golden Medal 2018 in the Vatican, Rome, the first African under the age of 45 to be recognized by a sitting pope. Professor Vazeo was talking about this and he was saying, I don't want to say something. I think what he wanted to say, we all thought Professor Vanada was a Catholic. So for the Pope to honor a non-Catholic, you must be very special. He was a laureate of the next Einstein Fellowship, alumni of the Global Young Academy, member of the Malabo Panel of Experts, fellow of the Uganda National Academy of Sciences, council member of the Pan-African Society for Agricultural Engineering, member of the Mackay University Senate, adjunct professor at Iowa State University in the United States, research fellow at Clare Hall at University of Cambridge, UK, college member of the UK Research Institute GCRF program. That is quite a huge achievement in that short life. In October 2020, Professor Vanada was inaugurated Oliver Reginald Tambo Research Chair, honored young scientist at the World Economic Forum, attracting US dollars 250,000 annually and an additional 100,000 pounds for the next 15 years for graduate research in agricultural waste management with a target of training 15 PhDs nine postdocs and 27 masters. So I would like to believe that for the next 15 years, our young people will enjoy the labor of Professor Vanada. His research focus, and I should say, messages of condolence are indeed pouring in, as Professor Vazio said, we have received condolences from Chukrova University. His colleagues, because the Oliver Tambo Chairs program is the first 
and he's among the first to win it. So all his colleagues, the other chairs at the other universities, are sending condolences. His research focus areas were in the biosystems engineering field and include mathematical modeling of biological systems and interactions. His goal was to create value-added products from solid bio-waste resources. Professor Vanada raised the flag of Makere University at both local and international scene. Every year, Vanada had a technology or an innovation at launch. He was the brain behind the development of parts of the Vlamo ventilator and the biodegradable face shields in the efforts to combat COVID-19. He developed the solar-powered irrigation pump, the multipurpose farmer's tractor called the MV Mulimi, and started the extraction of fuel from hard plastics and making insecticides from the eucalyptus and other agricultural waste, among others. Noble was favorably cited with thus far published research findings in over 240 peer-reviewed scientific journal publications with a record of 76,000 reads and 1,201 citations. He also co-supervised 12 PhD students to completion and 31 MSc students. At the time of his death, a number of PhD and master students were under his supervision. 12 PhDs in 10 years of service at Makere University. Can anyone beat that record? I doubt. Professor Vanada has served in the following capacities. Member of Mackay University Council, Member of Mackay University Senate, Chairperson of Mackay University Contracts Committee, and others. At the time of his death, he was also serving in the capacity of Chair Department of Agriculture and Biosystems Engineering, School of Foods, Technology, Nutrition, and Bioengineering. He survived by his wife, Dr. Beatrice Namaganda Vanada, and children, Daniel Mayombe Vanada, David Lutaya Vanada, and Joy Deborah Lutaya Vanada, and we sincerely send our condolences to them. Professor Vanada's legacy is clearly written on the walls. He was an astute education administrator, a great man of inestimable quality, a visionary and innovative leader, and a national builder who had touched the lives of many positively as characterized by his honesty, sincerity, integrity, devotion, and self-service to our university. And I must add humility. Because with all these achievements, I never in a single moment thought that Professor Vanada was boasting about his achievements. He was so down to earth, as has been said. In the words of the late great Nelson Mandela, death is something inevitable. When a man has done what he considers to be the duty to his people and his country, he can rest in peace. What counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived. It is what difference we have made to the lives of others that will determine the significance of the life we lead. So, as you, the immediate members of his family, mourn his demise to glory, do not think you are alone, but rest assured that we truly miss him and also mourn with you. At the time of his demise, the host of bill stood at 110 million Uganda shillings. We thank the Petroleum Authority for clearing 34 million of that bill. I want to thank the universal community who have contributed a total of 50 million Ugandan shillings to, to us clearing the host of bill. I don't think there has ever been in the history of Makerere that show of solidarity on the loss of a colleague. A colleague. And I want to thank the Makerere Universal community sincerely. 
at a university will surely miss a great academic, a researcher. But we thank God for giving him to us for the time he was with us. Fair be well, our colleague and friend. May your soul rest in peace. It is I would now like to take this opportunity to invite the chair council to make her remarks. The chair council is online. Please join and make your remarks. Yeah, you are muted, I think. I am on. I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Yes, please. You may continue. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chancellor. I was just saying that this afternoon is a very difficult afternoon. Actually, from yesterday when the news came through. Makere University is filled with heavy hearts at the loss of Professor Banada, we have been left speechless and with deep sorrow. When I first, um, when I came onto council two years ago, Professor Banada was one of the very first people to warmly welcome me onto the council and to pledge his support. And the time that he was with us on council, he was very, very supportive, very unassuming, but always giving wise counsel. He always came up to me with his signature smile and would quietly mention something that I knew would be an important point to consider. So we became friends. And even when he left the university, the council, the council, he often sent me messages of what he was doing. He sent me video clips and always sent, he never failed to send a joke or two. He became my friend. And so the loss of Banada has been one of the most difficult ones that I've experienced in the last few weeks. On behalf of the University Council, I convey our heartfelt condolences to the family of Professor Banada and the Makere University community on this tragic loss. Nobo has been a towering figure across diverse spheres of Makere University. He has been a prolific academic and who has also been active in the university's administrative and policy space. All this has already been talked about. Like the vice chancellor mentioned, he served on Senate and on council, and at the time of his passing was the chairperson of the contracts committee. I remember the time that he chose to go to the contracts committee. I actually pleaded with him to stay on council. And he said, Chair, I want a new challenge. I want to go and serve on the contracts committee. And so Banada was a man who never shied away from challenge. And so I released him. I said, it's okay, Banada, you can go. The somber mood across Makere platforms, physical or online, demonstrates how Professor Banada touched the lives of many in this community and how his demise has hit all of us very hard. We commensurate with his young family, the friends, colleagues, and students, and pray that the grace of God comforts you and carries you through this difficult moment and the days ahead. As we mourn and grieve Professor Banada, let us also remember to celebrate his incredibly outstanding achievements at such a young age of 46 years. Let us celebrate the life of a loving husband, a father, brother, son, colleague, scholar, administrator, and dear, dear friend. We convey our sympathies to Dr. Beatrice Namaganda, 
and the children and commend you into the loving arms of Christ. I pray that you will be comforted knowing that Noble impacted many lives through his service to humanity. He leaves behind a great legacy. Professor Banada shall be dearly missed by all of us. As the psalmist said in Psalm 34 verse 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. I know that he is with us and we are confident that he will grant us comfort, especially to the family. May Professor Noble Banada's soul rest in eternal peace. God bless you all. Thank you very much, Mrs. Lona Magara, our chairperson of council for those remarks. It is now my honor to invite the Chancellor Makere University, Professor Suruma, to make his remarks. Thank you very much, Professor Naongwe. Um, or the dignitaries, uh, chairperson of council, Rona Magara, and members of council, um, all protocol observed, uh, ladies and gentlemen, fellow mourners. I learned uh, of this only this morning, uh, Dr. Gary Stujagenda, who is in the Prime Minister's delivery unit. He called me and he told me, and I do not believe him. So I had to call Professor Nawangwe and some other people. I, I look frozen. Can you hear me? Yes. My picture looks frozen. We can hear you, Prof. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, um, it was it was hard to to it still is hard to to accept that someone as young as dynamic and yet brilliant uh, a person as Bernard has, has, has just gone. Uh, 1975, when he was born in May 1975, I had been a lecturer at McKinley for about 18 months and I was just going back two years to finish my PhD and he was just being born in May 1975. It's hard for me to, to accept that such a young person uh, is gone, is gone from us. I, I don't know, I don't know many professors now at the university, although I'm chancellor, but somehow he stood out Somehow, I remember he invited me to a number of events to come and, and uh, officiate at the event, and I did. I came to, to like him, I came to respect him, and when he was uh, given the award at the Vatican, he actually informed me. We were on WhatsApp together. Uh, Indeed, I had started to wonder why I wasn't hearing from him because he was always saying something. But in the last uh, week or two, I said, but I have not heard from Bernard. I looked for something, there was no post, but I did not know that he was in hospital. I myself was having a problem because my wife was in hospital. And uh, luckily for us, she has recovered and she's, she's back home. But it's been a difficult period for all of us in the country. I want to send 
uh, condolences to the family. It is uh, an incredible tragedy uh, for such a young couple and young children to lose this brilliant man. And for our country, Uganda, it's a huge, huge loss. I remember I was invited to a special cabinet meeting uh, by the president, and we were wondering who could be uh, on a special committee, uh, uh, some committee on the economy, uh, in the area of agro-processing. And I, I proposed his name, and the president accepted, and, and the prime minister also accepted. So he was actually on this committee, a special committee, some committee on the economy um, responsible for, he was responsible for agro-processing, and he had written some material together with Gervis um, in, in, in Prime Minister's delivery unit. And the speed at which he responded, I mean, he must have worked overnight. I remember asking him for a paper. And in, in the following day, I had the paper. I couldn't believe the speed at which he had done that work. The, the loss to our country is, 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 is un unbelievable. It's, it's unbearable. And, and um, but we have no choice on this. Uh, God has a purpose for each one of us and a plan. And we have to accept God's decision, God's will. So uh, in the words of Shakespeare, uh, his life was gentle and it really was. And elements were so well mixed in him, and they really were. The nature itself, the whole of Uganda, the whole world, did indeed stand up and say, this is a man, this is a special human being. And what can I say? He touched us, he helped us, he worked for his country, his family. Now he's gone. I pray that we will be with him in heaven. I pray that we will uh, be in his company when, with the angels, each when our time comes. And so let's not grieve too much. Let's pray that he will have eternal life and we shall live with him in eternity. Thank you for listening. The Lord bless you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chancellor Makere University. As we celebrate the life of Professor Nobu Banada, uh, we are going to play the Makere University anthem. Uh, Gordon, please, if uh, you can take lead in that, then after that we shall hand over to the church. I thank you very much for being patient. We are almost uh, uh, getting there. Thank you. Oh! 
and mighty the walls around thee. Great, great and mighty the gates beside thee. Great, great and mighty the walls around thee. Great, great and mighty the gates beside thee. Those who hear thee, seek ye the truth. Build for the future the great Makere. Those here have been, those here will be. Build for the future the great Makere. Makere, Makere. We build for the future the great Makere. Great, great and mighty the walls around me. Great, great and mighty the gates beside thee. Great, great and mighty the walls around thee. Great, great and mighty the gates beside thee. Thank you very much, Gordon, for that. Please take your seats. Uh, we have come to the second part of the session. Uh, which is going to be led by church. I now take uh, the honor to invite Dr. Mikasin, the elder for the Seventh Adventist Students Association, uh, Makere University. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Nawangwe, and all the other deans, professors, lecturers, and student friends. We are here to celebrate the life of our friend, Professor Noble Banada. Indeed, he was a legend. That's what I can say. Distinguished guests, it's my privilege to be a part of this service. And on behalf of all the Seventh-day Adventist students of Makarara University. When I looked at his profile, of course, we knew about a part of his academia. Indeed, it is a great loss for the world of academia. The research tinge and the human touch that he always had with people. Even when he dealt with the students, it was exceptional. And the first time I met with him, of course I was delegated as the elder for the Seventh-day Adventist students of Makarara University in 2014. Since then, I have been taking care of this community within this great Makarara University. The first time I met with him, there were two gentlemen in this room. And when I walked, walked across, both of them were on phone. So I thought the elderly person in that room was Professor Banada. And I was eagerly waiting, looking at his face. Until there was a young man, I would say young boy. He turned around and said, oh, you are Dr. Milka. I was super stunned. And he introduced himself as Professor Banada. I got an explosion in my stomach. I said, what? Wow. This young boy is a professor in the Banada that I knew of and I heard about. Since then, our friendship was quite strong and it were, he was a very strong pillar for the student community of Makarara University. Makarara University Seventh-day Adventist Association, we have, it's a big family. And I'm proud to say that Professor Banada was our chief advisor. We have our patroness, Mrs. Penina, here. 
She has also been a very good instrument in the growth, the spiritual growth of the community. As I speak today, the Seventh-day Adventist Students Association, we are a 400 student family. We have done a lot of projects, both within the campus and outside the campus. We had always got counsel from Professor Banada, and one of the striking projects that we been holding was to build a primary school in Kayunga district. The student community of Makarar University, specifically the Seventh-day Adventist students, they themselves were on the ground and they had done this beautiful project. There are so many other projects which the Seventh-day Adventist students of Makarar University has accomplished. And I thank the university administration for taking care of us. And in fact, every time we didn't have a place to worship on the Sabbath day, there were times when you used to even worship under the, under the trees. That's when I used to call Professor Banada and he said, now, should we really worship like this? That's when he used to get support from the university authorities because our students, in fact, I have the student president, Joshua, who is a student of electrical engineering. He is a president of the Musda I mean, the Students Association of the uh, Seventh-day Adventist Students Community within Makarare. It is time for us to celebrate his life, his achievements, and that's why we are here. Thank you so much for inviting us and to celebrate his life. When we heard this sad news, it was devastating for the entire community of the Seventh Adventist students at Makarara University. So we made it a point that we invite the bishop of the Seventh Adventist Church of, in Uganda. But we were able to get the deputy. We don't call them bishops, but he is the executive secretary of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Uganda. He is our father, he is our mentor, and he is a very powerful preacher and a counselor. And it is my privilege to have him here amidst us and break the bread of life. A consoling message for not only for us, but also for the family. It is my humble plea and request that the university authorities continue to look at us as your children. We are 400 in number. And every week we meet and we have, so, we have conducted so many health camps, not only within the campus, but also around the university campus. We also do moral and ethical lessons to minimize pre-marriage pregnancy among women within the campus, and we have successfully done that. We have enrolled so many other non-members also within the community, and we have reached out many other people outside Makarere as well. So I would, in the absence of Professor Nobel, it is my humble plea and our request that you still consider us as your children. And the first time Professor Banada was asking me, but why did you take the university to the court? He said, no, the church never took you to the court. It was two erratic students who took. So it doesn't mean that we'll have to be the scapegoat and be vulnerable for all this rampage. But we seek apologies if there was some kind of affixated idea that this community took. No. We apologize if it was there in your mind, but we are very good people, God-fearing children. None of our students had ever participated in the violent activities within the university campus because the moment we smell of it, we always sensitize them. Biblical principles and moral principles, they rule our day life. 
And so we appeal that you continue to support the Seventh-day Adventist students within the campus. And uh, we thank you. May God bless you abundantly. And it is my privilege to invite Pastor Dr. Maka Moses, the Executive Secretary of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Uganda, to deliver God's message and the consoling message for the family. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his peace reign over your heart. Amen. The Chancellor, Chair of Council, uh, the University Vice Chancellor, University Administrators here present and online, academicians, faculty, the bereaved family, the SDA Church, fellow mourners, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor and privilege to join you as we mourn and celebrate the great life and legacy left behind by Professor Noble Ephraim Banada. Want to extend the word of comfort to Makerere University to the SDS student community in the university, to the SDA church, and indeed to the family for the loss of such a great life. Today we join you to thank the Lord for the life of this important man. I am not going to give a lengthy tribute, but I'm here to get you into the word of God so that we can be able to comfort one another as we face such a daunting challenge of the loss of one of us. For Banada, personally, I could have much to say. We went to school together. In fact, when I was leaving, he joined in senior one at Bugema Adventist College then. We mentored him and we have been together for such a long time. Without spending any further time, let me invite you, those of you who can, to open with me our key text that is going to come from the book of Psalms 90, Psalm 90 and verse 12. The Bible says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Before I get there, may I request that you bow your heads with me as we seek the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, with a sudden heart, we gather today to mourn the departure of one of us but also to celebrate the legacy and life so well spent. We now pray that as we spend a few moments in your word, may you be present with us to reach with us and wherever your people are listening and watching from glory and honor be to you. For we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. It was the French philosopher Jean Jacques Rochu who wrote and said, we are born crying. We pass through this world complaining and we die unsatisfied. We are born crying. We pass through life complaining and we die unsatisfied. He summed up life in that statement so to say that if you critically look at what human life is all about, this statement of this philosopher does sum it up 
even for the relevance for which we are here. We come into this world, those of you who know Christ, it is said that the language, the indication that tells a human being that is alive is the sound of a cry. Every one of us did at our first language in form of a cry. And that is the indication uh, that midwives and medical practitioners will tell that the child has been born and is alive. We are born crying. I wonder why it is so. Why God chose that? Why he couldn't choose maybe a laughter? Why he couldn't choose any other sign but it is the sign of crying that does identify us as human beings. We, therefore, when we see life, we go through it in lots of challenges, he has said. But do you know that we also leave this world in tears? As we come into the world crying for ourselves, we leave this world when others are crying for us. To an extent that a human being's life is bracketed in tears. But in all life's challenges, there's one thing that makes us cry most. Yes, we do cry all through. But one thing does make us cry most, and that is death and its care. According to the Bible, death has been with us for a long time since Eden. But if there is something that remains our greatest care and the enemy is nothing but death. Death is something that you and I will never get used to. We get experiences many things, but we can never and will ever, never say that I have experience in death. Because the more, in fact, death strikes you closest, the more you become more scared that you cannot say, I am now experienced in death, therefore I am able. Yet this death that scares us so. Is so inevitable, so inescapable an appointment that human race have to meet with this death appointment at one time or the other. You can run away from it. You can disguise or escape death's hand for a moment, but later it will catch up with you. One person said that if I knew where I was going to die, and when I was going to die, I wouldn't go to that place that time. Did you hear that? He said, if I knew where I was going to die, and when I was going to die, I would avoid that place at that time. Unfortunately, none of us knows the time, know the place. We many times move towards those very places at those particular times because death's appointment is inescapable and inevitable. And three of the most scaring things about death are that we are going never more to return. I wish death was a vacation where we could go and spend some time and know what is there and then come back. I wish it were so. And that scares us. That those that go never come back to tell the story. Mm, scare number two. Going where? We don't know. Yes, stories have been told, but because no one has been there before, we don't know where we are going. Some surmise that we are going this way, we are going that way. He's in a better place. He's in heaven. He's that. In fact, if it were so, that the Bible was telling me that death is going to heaven, I would hasten go. Because why and where do I labor to be but in heaven? But going nowhere, we do not know. Thirdly, is the separation with our loved ones and with our world. These three scary elements are associated heavily with death. Two young boys were playing by some gold mine nearby and uh, as they were playing they saw 
trucks going in into that gold mine, playing by it. And then one said to the other, go in. The other said, no, I am afraid. I can't go there. And he said, go ahead and get in. You are not the first one. Look, trucks are going in. And the young boy said to the other, that is the very reason why I'm afraid. I see trucks going in, but I don't see anyone coming out. If it were that death was a vacation, that we knew where we were going, we would come and get there so joyfully. It is for that reason that the psalmist comes up and says, teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teaching us to number our days is very important. And I want to thank you, Makerere University, for this tribute. Professor Nawangwe, we want to thank you for documenting the life history of this young and noble man called Nobo. When you look at what uh, Professor Nawangwe has given us, you will be able to realize, as other professors have also said, you'll be able to realize that Nobo has dared a feat not many can ever dare to accomplish. He's been working so fast because he learned how to count his days. And that is the message the psalmist is bringing to all of us. Let us learn to count, yes, many things that we are told to count, but the most important thing in life to learn how to count is to number our days. Because we do not know when and we don't know where. And Noble has lived a legacy true to this principle that give me wisdom to number my days. Working overnight at such a young age to become a professor, I've also taught in the university and uh, older than him, but I couldn't dare what Nobo has dared to do in this life. It is very important to know that today we are and tomorrow no more. And what we have to do today, we need to accomplish it for that creates a legacy that we are going to leave behind tomorrow. Unfortunately, even nobody didn't know that today we would be doing such a, thi a thing as this, but he did his best during his lifetime of so short a time. You know, friends, we need to do it. Death has been reducing our, our existence on earth every other day. We are told when we read in the Bible that those who came before us were living 900 years. Plus, then the Bible reduces that in documents 120 years in Exodus. You go over in the book of Psalms and the span is reduced further to 60 to 70 and 80 years but full of labor and toil. Today as we speak now we are celebrating a legacy of only 40 years, not even a century, not a half a century. And with the coming of COVID, this is where we are. I know your time is constrained, but allow me to talk to you today. Because many of us are in the academia, in research, in meetings and the like. But I need to prepare you with the example of the departure of such a young one to know that none of us is indispensable in the scourge and the scare of death. If Nobo at such a young age, so dynamic and vibrant, one who has been also researching on the very COVID, could be taken by the very scare of COVID, then who? Can dare boast. My Bible tells me that you and I walk in the shadow of death. The Bible says in Psalm 23, verse 4, that yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. I wish I could explain further, but I am interested in just one phrase there. The valley of the shadow of death. Shadow of death. Do you know that when we talk about the shadow, 
We are talking about an object in the presence of light. For just as every object moves in the proximity of its ever-present shadow, even so every human being moves with its shadow of death all the time. When you see an object, when you see a shadow rather, you should know that the object that it represents is just close by. And the Bible says the shadow of death. Meaning the reality of death is close, but the shadow hangs all over us. And every time, as we walk on the road, when you start your engine of the car going anywhere, that's a shadow of death. You may go, but never return. As you go into your, your bedroom to sleep, that's another hanging shadow of death. You may sleep and never come back. Even while eating, Swallowing, you might swallow one and another might choke you and never be able to swallow another. That's a shadow of death. As you enter anywhere, it's a shadow of death. As you move around, Corona has made even our environment a potential shadow of death. For we don't know where we'll find it. I can't be with my, my mask here, but I might have already round this, the, the virus inside the mask that I'm enjoying it already. That is life. That is life. Someone has said that whenever you go to bed, that you know that you are practicing death. For as you lay there, one day it will be so. Before you wait to be told when you will not hear anymore, Whenever you go to bed, let you know that the shadow of death hangs upon you. And that is something we can fear, but we are powerless before. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 8 says, No one has power over his spirit, and no one has power in the day of death. Yes, we have power and authority over many things, but death is one thing that we cannot be able to, to boast about so much. As human beings, even in our great research, great inventions have been done and discoveries. And although knowledge and wisdom have increased tremendously during this age, no one has ever invented nor discovered the solution to avert the scourge of death. We are all powerless before death. I want to conclude by telling you that though we are so powerless over this hanging shadow of death that may ret return into a reality in time, there is some good news somewhere that the Bible happens to be that book that gives us the true counsel and guidance in this care of death. It is there we can run to. It is there we can stand and boast before death. Only in the Bible can we raise up our heads and talk to death. Nowhere else. But even in the Bible, the Bible counsels us in Proverbs 27 verse 1 and says, do not boast about tomorrow. That's the counsel. Do not boast about tomorrow for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Today is the day. And Nobo lived knowing that today is the day. He was living in the present. We also can emulate this life as we celebrate it to know that we can live in the present because today we have it, but tomorrow we are not sure. You know, friends, as I go by, it may be the end and you hear the man who was shouting there. <laughs> He's also no more. And friends, this, this can, be, can, can be a scare, but I am comforted only with one thing that as a student of the Bible, there is some consolation and comfort and assurance that though it may strike me, death is not the end according to the Bible. That's why he said, teach us to number our days, uh, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. The Bible reveals that the only single individual who has overpowered death is Jesus Christ. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Who is, who was, and he is to come, the Almighty. That's the only one who says, I have the keys of hate, son, and hell. 
The only person whom we can put our trust in the scare of the shadow of death that may become a reality in time. And when you put your belief and faith in this man, Jesus Christ, you can overcome even the fear of death. Jesus, at one time, in the face of death of a friend, in John chapter 11, verse 25, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he will live again. And that's the legacy for which I stand for. That's the consolation and hope and assurance for which makes it can, I can stand before you knowing that I can mourn and grieve for noble, but one day I am going to see this young man again. I know when I put my faith in him, by the way, just yesterday, I laid out another service with his wife Beatrice when we didn't know what would happen in the evening. We laid out a service for him. And his wife was by him and we were able to offer our message and also encourage the family. Knowing that one day, even I who is shouting before you will be no more, but I am not scared of that. <laughs> Professor Baseo, I am not scared. For I know any time it can be time. For I know any place it can be that time. But when that time comes, may I be found in him who is the resurrection and the life. Professors, that's the only, the only message I can leave with you. As we do our research, as we go about university business, let us know that that day can strike any time. But I'm encouraged to know that God is not scared in the face of death, even for us, even for people like Banada. We had time to prepare him. You know, there are two types of people who die. <laughs> there are two types of people who die. Those who believe in Jesus and those who have rejected to put their lives in Jesus. And for those who have put their lives in Jesus, Jesus is not scared even for their death. Ezekiel 33 verse 11 says, Say to them, as I live, says the Lord your God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked may turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die? Friends, I want to encourage us to, make, to put our houses in order. I want to encourage us to remember God when we are starting the day, during the day, and at the end of the day. Let us remember to also do what we have today, to do today, for tomorrow, we do not know. And for those who have put their lives in Jesus, Psalm 116 says, 116 verse 15, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of saints. Uh, God is not scared when giants like him breathe their last. For he knows uh, that they are not wasted, but they only wait the resurrection morning when he shall come and be with them. I want to leave you with this text. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. It says, Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Blessed are the dead who die. Did you know that even with dead bodies, they can be categorized, they are those that can be categorized as blessed. Blessed are they that die in the Lord. I want to pray that as we go about life's business and make achievements in this world, I want to believe that the greatest achievement that I will ever make is not to become a doctor, is not to become a professor, is not to build a house, is not to get an estate in place, but the greatest on planet Earth is the preparation, the foundation for the life to come. It is my prayer that as this young man went about his business, preparing his life, hesitantly, knowing that today is only the day that we may emulate this legacy, this life, not only in academia, but also spiritual. You've been praising him here, but we'll give you an opportunity when even the brethren in the church give their tribute to such a man. He's not been active here alone, 
but he has left a legacy wherever he stepped his feet. Here's my prayer, that we will live to celebrate his life as we also learn and pick a leaf from there. I want to request you that you rise up with me as we dedicate ourselves in prayer and remember and celebrate this great life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we seem powerless as human beings before this scourge of death. But we want to thank you that through Christ Jesus, we are encouraged that he overcame death and he has the keys of hate and hell. We want to thank you for it is him who went into the grave and came out alive and today he lives as a testimony. We want to thank you most especially for the life of your son, noble Ephraim Bananda. For the few years of life that you have given him on planet Earth, you've been able to work through him to create an outstanding legacy to the glory of your name. And this so, because this young man believed in you, he put his life in you, and he's been moving knowing that today, is my day, but tomorrow I am not sure. We want to thank you for Makerere University and for what he stood for in here. But most especially, we want to thank you for his family that loaned them over to us. We pray for the family that as they mourn the departure of this great pillar within the midst, Father, go over and comfort them for you, a God who is always present in times of sorrow. Comfort them and may you now make us see and realize that his is over. Now it is ours. Thank you for Makerere. And thank you for your people. Thank you for the church. Thank you for the family. To you, Father, be glory now and forevermore. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. And may God comfort you. Uh, thank you very much, Pastor, uh, for that uh, wonderful sermon. I request the audience to give you a loud applause uh, for the job well done. We very much appreciate uh, those words of wisdom, especially in preparing for death. Uh, we have come to uh, the end. Uh, but I want to take this opportunity to uh, thank uh, everybody who has uh, uh, seated in and uh, uh, for being patient uh, for all this time, uh, especially the Chancellor who's been online, uh, the Chair, Makere University Council, Mrs. Rona Magara, uh, Makere Top Management, uh, for making this possible. Uh, we very much appreciate uh, for the support and providing resources uh, for the function to take place. Uh, Makere University Academic Staff Association, ably represented by the Vice Chair, uh, Professor Edward Mwavu. Uh, Kayes Management, uh, ably represented uh, by the Principal, Professor Bernard uh, the staff of Makere University, both academic and non-academic. Some of them are here, others are online. Uh, the student's body, uh, Mr. Uh, Vice Chancellor, we have uh, students who have come uh, to be part of us, and uh, quite a number of them are online. Uh, the friends and family, uh, who are physically here and online. I got some statistics uh, a few minutes back, uh, which indicated that uh, there was 500 plus on Zoom, uh, 78 on Facebook, 80 on YouTube, 40 on Instagram, and over 100 on Twitter. 
So that shows the caliber of Professor Nobo Banada. I believe if it wasn't for COVID, we would have uh, filled the Freedom Square. And I think that talks of uh, a great man uh, that we have lost. I also want to appreciate the media team uh, for doing a wonderful job. Uh, normally these online uh, uh, functions, sometimes you can get uh, quite a number of hitches. You expect someone to be speaking and you can't hear them, but they have done a wonderful job. Uh, uh, with that, uh, we've come to the end. Uh, I want to wish you Jane Massey is back home, and uh, we all put our hands together uh, to wish our colleague, our friend, our teacher, uh, a good or a smooth transition, because like the pastor said, he has left this world, but we think he has joined another place. And uh, may his soul rest in peace. Thank you very much.